If I was a character in the Hunter Hunter world, I would probably be a conjurer and I would be on par with the likes of Isaac Netero himself. What's up guys, it's your boy King here, back at it again with more anime content and today we're going to be taking a quick dive into the wonderful world of the Hunters. It made us sad, it gave us joy, the twists and turns of the plot gave us fresh insights into what Shonen Jump stories may be, but as the famous saying goes, all good things must come to an end. Without a doubt, Hunter x Hunter will go down in history as one of the greatest stories of all time, with its multi-dimensional cast of characters, fantastical settings, compelling plots and unresolved mysteries. But perhaps one of its greatest accomplishments is the establishment and fine storytelling of one Mr. Gone Freaks. From beginning to end, his story is intriguing, from a classic shonen trope character to a dark and cynical sending character. His character arc was so interesting that I didn't want the arc to end, and I wished he could have continued his journey alongside Killua. But I admit that's quite selfish of me, because as far as his story goes, it's done, right? He accomplished his objectives, he became a hunter, found his father and discovered what it means to be a hunter, so there wouldn't be any need to bring him back. Now I know you didn't click on this video simply to hear what every other Anituber has been saying, you clicked on this video knowing that I would offer you reason to hope for Gon's return, and that I will do. But to be honest, even I'm not sure how this video will end. Picking up where our young hero's story left off, he had just discovered the very real death of his mentor, Kite, and with that piece of information we saw the greatest transformation of a shonen character, and I'm not talking about his physical transformation but rather his core. The trope requires the character to have this optimistic never give up attitude that always allows them to pull themselves up from any situation and try harder. But no, 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 not with our boy, not with him, no. Gone is different, and this is crucial in understanding why he might return. To obtain such power, he had to give up all of the men he would have ever had. But with this power came a great realization for Gone. He learned to understand the ever changing nature of humanity and the harsh lesson we all come to recognize. Just because you were hurt does not mean you have the right to hurt others. A basic lesson indeed, but not to all the inhabitants of the Hunter x Hunter world. An example being Gyro, and of course we can recognize Hisoka and Krollo as fine examples, but in this case, this man is the mystery man that we will quite well focus this entire notion around. This man parallels Gon in every way. I believe if a reason ever existed for us to witness the return of Gon in Killua, it would be this man. Gyro, who spent his childhood in a construction camp, is both sensible and productive. Qualities that combined with a smart mind and natural charisma enabled him to develop an empire. Gyro only lost his humanity after realizing that no one ever loved him. Despite years of maltreatment from his father, he still had that hope in his heart that his father was like God. And I kid you not, this man believed that. As a result, he stopped identifying himself as a human and began to loathe the entire humanity. He has now evolved into a harsh and ruthless individual, his purpose evolved into spreading evil throughout the world, which he still pursues. His determination and pride as a previous king enabled him to retain all of his human memories and release himself from the Chimera and Queen's captivity, allowing him to leave her dominion. His malevolence and resolve are unparalleled and he is now fully divorced from the human race, having been reincarnated as a different species. So yeah, we can expect great things from this man, I hope Togashi will take notes on this. Now, Gyro was in Dolly City at the same time as Gon and Killua after their meeting with Nefer Pito. However, they never met. His whereabouts after the death of the Chimera and Queen are unclear, however, it is assumed that he is attempting to rebuild his kingdom. During the takeover of the royal palace of East Goto, Welfin and Ikaugo discover that Gyro was their king in prior incarnations. Welfin believes Gyro is still alive and is determined to find him. Now, as a result of the events concluding in the national gathering in East Goto, Welfin, Hina, and Bizef all sail for Meteor City, where, according to Welfin, they will most likely see Gyro as he strives to form a new nation. Now, picture this. 
The Phantom Troop are not present in Meteor City and no one of any significant power stands a chance against him. Not to mention Meteor City is exceedingly poor and they relied on the troop for practically everything. So the option to hire a group of hunters is quite unlikely. Jing and Pariston, the only two characters who exist to combat him on a mental level are not present as well, so who can stop him? While the likelihood of Gon returning to the series and participating in the Dark Continent arc is unlikely, Gyro remains a menace that must be dealt with. And as of now, Gon and Kilua are the only ones there to battle him. And to be honest, Togashi might hate us for talking about this because he said he was done, but I guess that's, that's what happens when your creation has a life of its own. I mean, he, he expected that much. Now, others frequently find it difficult to interpret or relate Gon's actions or thoughts to what they would consider normal, with some assuming him to be slightly insane. When Gon is intrigued or amazed, he doesn't care about the good or the bad, according to Zeppeli. In the beginning, Gon's morality is complicated, almost broad. He fears death and has morals, yet he can separate his personal impulses from them. He thanked Binot, a serial murderer, mind you, for helping him get stronger, and despite knowing how dangerous Hisoka is, Gon admires his strength. Despite his desire to put an end to the Phantom Troops' activities, uh, Gon never despised them until he found out they were capable of feeling emotion and empathy. He never criticized Kilua for his history as an assassin, but he became irritated with Illumi when he began to suspect that rather than Kilua killing because he was not trained to value life, his family was forcing him to do so regardless of his feelings. Th th this, man is, this man is quite messed up. He's got, he's got a twisted sense of morality. When Kai died in front of Nefer Pito, Gon hated himself because he was too weak and spiraled into a destructive and self-destructive cycle. During his spiral into rage, he became exceedingly angry and single-minded, focusing solely on getting Pito to repair Kite. And if it hadn't been for Kilua, he would have surely killed Komugi. At the height of his mental collapse, he was willing to kill Komugi if Nefer Pito refused his plea, which is really, really just pure insanity. And as previously stated, he eventually agreed to give up his own life to kill the ant. So what have we learned, kids? Uh, all the qualities of Gyro packed in that little boy with the exception of his intelligence, but the difference being Gon defeated that vengeful parasite within him. Togashi made it clear that the series wouldn't always be about Gon, as a matter of fact, he planned to get rid of him, which he did, because he wanted to change the theme of the whole series and Kurapika seems to fit the criteria for such a change. But I like to think Gon does as well, especially after the Chimera and Ark. But I see his point, Kurapika's story still carries a lot of mystery to it, and the Phantom Troop and how they came to be is another intriguing mystery in itself, in comparison to that of Gon, and with that, it doesn't seem as interesting, but the classic battle of good and evil is always engaging. And that is exactly what Gon vs Gyro would give us, so I'm kind of hanging on a cliff. On one hand, at this point, I really don't mind if Gon doesn't return because the current story being told is really good and I don't see a reason to shift focus but Gyro is such a mystery and it would be an L on Togashi's part to add an element to his story that he had no intention of using. But he's not beyond that, the man has done that so many times. Not to mention Togashi has been releasing a lot of new info on Nen, so Gon's return is uh, well welcomed but not just yet and Gon certainly can still wield Nen, he just can't see. Gon hasn't lost his Nen, mind you nor is he unable to use it. For some reason, uh, this misconception is common. Many fans believe it's a good reason not to bring back Gon, but as we've seen, anything is possible in the hunter world, and I believe if Togashi wanted, he would find a way. So I hope to see the return of Gon one day. And with that, please guys, subscribe to my channel, and don't forget to hit that like button, and if you, if you, if you have the time, please share the content.